Dr. Alejandro, welcome back to the podcast, sir. Good to be back. Rich, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, today's subject matter is, isn't a lot of fun, but it's something that, that we should talk about, and we're getting some mm -hmm. questions about it. Um, unfortunately, in life, accidents happen. Things just sometimes think stuff happens. A lot of people are wondering what what do we do when something bad happens? Like, can you talk us through calling Bomberos 911? The, just the whole setup from your perspective. Can you kind of hold our hand through that process, please? Yes, uh, gladly. So I'm going to start with 911. When you call 911, that creates an incident. 911 is responsible to call the Cruz Roja or the Red Cross. They're in Nosada. Uh, they have um, two units and they work on a volunteer, a volunteer system and one or two people are being paid during regular hours. So that 911, what it's actually doing is trying to locate the people that work or the volunteers for Cruz Troja. If the units are not in Nosara or not available, they're going to they're gonna call Nicoya or Ohancha and that's how long that's going to take to calm down. Cruz Roja ambulances are basic support. That means that they will not be able to do a lot of like life support maneuvers, medications, or equipment in case that's needed. When you call bomberos, bomberos are, are usually uh, uh, first in a lot of the scenes around here, which is really useful. They can pass on some of the information to whoever needs that. Bomberos or Cruz Roja, or sometimes they can also call us. Um, we have uh, uh, an advanced support ambulance. That means that we're able to do uh, maneuvers and we have the drugs and the equipment. Uh, it's always going to go with a paramedic and a medic. That's the way we're set up based on the recommendations from Hector, our paramedic. And that's how we move around. Um, we are able to take people either to San Jose, Liberia, or Nicoya. So what happens if it's something really serious? The first option is always going to be the hospital in Nicoya. If, if it's private or uh, public, the first uh, option is going to be Nicoya Hospital. They have surgeons, they have operating rooms, they have an ER um, um, department, they have ultrasounds, they're able to do a lot of things, but it's a public system. So you're not going to be in your own room and they also don't have an MRI or a CT scan. We trust um, the, the group of medics that are there. We have really good friends that are able to help us out and support, support us in some of, some of the cases that we take there. The other option is Liberia. There's a private hospital in Liberia which has also a limited amount, uh, a limited response in, in some cases. And the third option is to go to San Jose. Going to San Jose, it's either gonna be by your car, the ambulance or a, or a medevac. Medevacs, contrary to sometimes what people think, it's there's not a crew in, in the airship just waiting on a call and they're running towards the helicopter and they're flying into Nosara. It takes a while to coordinate. Uh, especially if you're going to require added specialists or an air crew. We usually fly people with a paramedic or a medic, depending on the case. But there's yeah. no real number that you can just call and, you know, have them come in. We usually help coordinate. We've used our providers for many years, which uh, they tend to give us uh, priority in this, in this sort of case. Okay, that makes sense. So I, I just, in, in my years down there, I guess you've gotten us to the hospital a couple of times, but via plane, via ambulance, uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to do this anymore, but I, I don't, I'll put myself under the bus. I don't, I don't, we've had some incidents in, in town recently and I, we don't want to bring up anybody's personal info. So let's, let's, mm -hmm. I'll pick on myself. When I had my head injury, you chose ambulance, but you also chose San Jose. Um, I don't remember any of it, obviously, but there, there was a reason. I guess it was significant enough. You said, let's go to San Jose. Yeah. So how do we know where to go and when, unless you're there with us? Or is that the point we need to call you and ask? Well, it, it definitely helps 
to get uh, our perspective since we've worked with all of these hospitals and kind of know what their services are. And so in your case, uh, we decided to take you directly to San Jose because that's where we're definitely going to find uh, a neurosurgeon if needed, at least a neurologist. And if you need an MRI, the only, there's no MRIs in Guanacaste. So San Jose, uh, I know it takes a little bit longer, uh, but we were betting on a safer and faster diagnostic and also a, a faster evaluation by the specialist needed. So that's why we chose that. If you're not a, if it's a real emergency, you need to go straight to, to Nicoya Hospital. Um, if you call us up and we're able to help, we'll definitely make the, the decision that we think is best depending on your case. So let's say you had a quad accident. A quad accident has the same type of trauma protocol in the States, in Canada, in Europe, as in Costa Rica. Uh, especially if you, let's say you went off road, you hit your abdomen on your handlebars, uh, what would be recommended is you get a fast ultrasound to check if there's any internal bleeding, that you get a series of x-rays of different bones, because if you have a broken bone, doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot move your limb or it's gonna be super painful. Um, that same protocol applies here in Nosada as in other places. Sometimes what happens is people decide that they're going to write it out, see how they feel without thinking of the uh, possible consequences, internal brain injuries, uh, punctured lungs, uh, internal bleeding, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what sometimes uh, complicates our the cases, sometimes that can complicate cases and we just give out the best, the suggestions that we think is best based on, on our experience. And I know people are worried about a, a lot of this stuff at night. It's really difficult to get permission for a helicopter or a plane right. to take off. Our, our weather conditions are complicated and sometimes costs uh, come a lot into play. We've done transfers where you know, just we'll settle this afterwards. The most important thing is to move this at this exact time. It happened with um, a patient here that had a, a lesion in one of one in his eyes, and and we can see the indecision in in parents or patients' uh, face. And uh, you know, but sometimes you just need to be really direct, and you know, just tell them like what you need is to do this right now. And that's what we do based on, on our experience. Some of the models that we have are really simple, better safe than sorry, and the sooner the better. Okay? That makes sense. I, I think I understand what you're saying because, yeah, I've had, I've had all three. I've had, you told me, hey, just my first quad accident in 2010, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. stay here, let's wait, let's see what happens. And then mm -hmm. later on, we, we drove and then we had an pl emergency plane flight mm -hmm. and it was all go now. And then we had the other injury via ambulance. So you're right. It seems like it's a case by case basis, but getting, getting to someone listening to this, what, what they might be wondering is I come out of the water or there's a, a, a drowning incident. Who do we call? Mm -hmm. Or there's a quad accident. Who do we call the basic thing? Who do we call? Can you walk us through? Like, when do we call Bomberos? When do we call you? When do we call 911? Um, all of them are a little interconnected. And, you know, we try to be as available as possible. Bomberos try to be available, as available as possible. 911 is always available, but sometimes the, the Red Cross is not there. Um, I think the best thing that people can do is no operation hours, um, you know, and also have the numbers at hand. If Bomberos find something that they need our support, they call us and they know how to get a, a hold of us. Uh, 911 has actually called uh, Hector, our, our operations and, and paramedic, because they have a life threatening situation and they know we have the only ambulance around. If it's a kid, if it's a bad accident, uh, they, they would actually also call him. We try to be as available as possible. Um, but who to call is I recommend that there's always an incident with 911. 
and then you can try our emergency phone numbers for uh, bomberos. That that I, I would think would be like the best uh, way to go. Uh, we try to move as fast as possible. Our ambulance sometimes is in the mechanic. Our paramedic sometimes could be you know out of Nosada doing personal stuff. When he is out, uh, two of us have our our permits to drive the ambulance so we try to take turns and be always on standby uh, but our cars you know you know the situation with cars in nosada like the same applies to the ambulance uh, the weather conditions are sometimes uh, not able to have um, flights uh, after 5 p.m., it's difficult to get uh, a plane or a helicopter into Nosara because it's sunset and they, they wouldn't allow them to fly. Um, so there's definitely a lot of ways to do this. There's definitely uh, options. It's important to know what your options are and, and how to move around because when a lot of some of this stuff can come down to money or insurance and you need to sometimes be either prepared or be willing to to right. to cover some of it so like you were saying a broken arm let's say you had a, an accident the water you have three broken ribs and you know something else an insurance is probably not going to pay for you to fly to san jose and get x-rays but you put it on a, you know, on a scale, like, do I want to go through a four hour ride, including 27 kilometers of a, a not so good road with that amount of pain, I need to give you morphine, you might have a cardiac situation and, you know, there could be some other consequences. Um, or you're able to uh, get on a plane and go there, get the x-rays. Maybe you have, you know, a punctured uh, lung or, you know, whatever else. And uh, you didn't risk it, but, uh, but you also are able to pay for that, for that sort of thing. The government covers some air transfer transfers, especially for kids. Uh, it's it's a little difficult difficult to coordinate, but it's doable. Okay, that's all very helpful info. So it sounds like in dire emergency, get to Nicoya as quickly as possible. Um, yeah. If if try it's contact, specialist, I mean, I mean, try to contact uh, a, a medical professional if if you can or if you have the time, uh, and and definitely will. We move as fast as we can and try to be as available. But if not, yes, Nicoya is the place to go. Let us know on the way, and we might be able to let it, let uh, the ER know. Uh, we might also be able to coordinate a flight transfer from Nicoya to San Jose. That's also doable. Or uh, have an ambulance on standby just to pick you up and you know, you know take you anywhere else that you might need. Like in your case. San Jose was the only option that we would have uh, done. But if there would have been a complication between Nicoya, between Nosara and Nicoya, we would have definitely stopped in Nicoya. Okay. That makes sense. So I'll, I'll try to recap it. If, well, first off, contact a medical, medical professional on Bomberos. Mm -hmm. If, if mm -hmm. it's significant and get guidance from there, or for the, or you guys can help steer the ship that's where you're going to go. But if it's super significant injury, get in a car really fast. If it's a specialist related type thing, you're going to need an MRI and neurologist, that type of stuff, San Jose. Um, but in the meantime, what you're saying is contact medical professional Bomberos as a first, mm -hmm. as a first course of action. Is that right? Yeah, that could be the, the way to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, um, what else would you like to say out there while, while we're talking on this unpleasant but realistic subject and it's part of your daily life? So, uh, um, I, I would say um, listen to advice, be prepared. Um, you know, the insurance definitely helps to have the, the insurance is, is, uh, is a good thing, even though 
they're really difficult to deal with sometimes, especially with air transfers, if it's not a life or death situation, uh, that there are options in Osada. There's, there's a way to, um, to go about this. It's just, it's important that you know how, have the contacts and the, the numbers that will be needed. And uh, yeah, li listen to, to the advice. I mean, we give out advice based on our past experiences and uh, what we you know, think could actually work in different cases. But be prepared, I think would be like the most important one. The contact information will get out there and thanks for sharing this. Uh, I'm just, my, in my mind, I'm stuck. We got to get to the tourists because a lot of the people who yeah. live here, maybe they have the number, but it's the, it's the person who's on vacation or just in town for a little bit. Didn't think of something like this happening. Like, I, we get I to feel that, that I, I feel that I talk a lot about this with uh, a lot of people, but uh, sometimes I know how it's changing so fast that, you know, the rotation of people also, also changes. So I think, um, most people know how to work about this, but uh, maybe in the last year and a half, that group of people that has come in are not so aware of the options. And some of them like, right. sometimes um, um, they sit down in the office and I ask them, oh, you're new here. Do you know what to do in an emergency? And I give out this uh, talk. But if anybody wants to know more, please contact us and, and we'll gladly uh, help out. Um, we just try to make it easy for everyone and to make sure that everybody is safe in, in those types of situations. We try to be here as much as possible and, and all around and then to have a, 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 an available staff permanently. Sometimes it's difficult, but that's what we aim, at, aim for. Mm. Well, as Nosara grows, the service level from you guys and others are increasing and we we all appreciate that. It's a safer place to be now than it ever has been, I, I would think. Thanks for helping the community and always checking on me. And I, I, we, all, we all appreciate you. So thank you very much. Same thing, man.